All right, today we got a mini battery from Watt Cycle. All right, so Watt Cycle sent us their new 12 volt, 100 amp hour mini battery, and it is mini indeed. Very nice and compact like the other minis that we've seen. Let's go ahead and weigh this guy. And we have 22.2 pounds. Now taking a look here, I think I'm seeing screw hole covers. So it may be really easy for us to get into this one. There we go. So yeah, there are screws down in there. Nice. All right, so we'll take it apart later but they sent us two of them so we've got two minis uh, i think what i want to do is i want to put them in parallel but before we do that they also sent us their battery monitor so let's take a look at that so there's the screen the shunt portion and the wiring that we need to wire it up some screws so yeah we'll go ahead and wire these in parallel charge them up then we'll go ahead and wire up their shunt and hook it up to an inverter and get the whole system running all right and as always before you place batteries in parallel we need to check the voltage of each battery to make sure that it's very close because if they're largely different in voltage You'll get some energy transfer. It may be at quite a bit when you try to connect them in parallel and you don't want that. So our first battery is 13.2 volts and our second battery is also 13.2. So we can put them in parallel. All right, these batteries are now in parallel, so I'm gonna charge them up together. All right, so I fully charged the batteries up in parallel. And so now let's go ahead and install the battery monitor and shunt. So I've got a length of wire that's gonna come off the negative side here. Let's go ahead and put that on. All right, so we need to connect the B minus side here to this. And obviously, if you're installing this, you need to mount this to something. <laughs> you don't want it just dangling. And then it needs to be connected to the positive side of the battery terminal. So here, I added this uh, terminal fuse right here. So we'll just hook this wire up here and the other end of it's going to go into the shunt here. I think we got to unscrew that. Okay. And since this wire needs to go to the positive terminal, I'm going to go ahead and connect the positive for the inverter. That way I can connect them both at the same time. All right, now we need to connect the negative wire to the inverter to the P negative of the shunt here. But before we do that, I need to use these pre-charge resistors to charge the capacitors in the inverter so we don't get a giant spark so do that for a few seconds. Okay, so that should be good. And go ahead and connect. There we go. All right. And again, this needs to be mounted to something. I'm just doing this right now as a test. <laughs> All right, so we got the batteries in parallel. We got the shunt hooked up and we've also got the inverter 
uh, wired in as well. So let's go ahead and hook up the screen. Okay, there we go. Now we've got data on the screen. Now, the batteries are fully charged. However, it is showing 0% uh, on here because this is not set up. Let's go into the settings. All right, so it's set to 100 amp hours. Since we have two 100 amp hour batteries in parallel, we need to actually set this to 200 amp hours. There we go. Uh, I think this is all we need to do right now. And I think in the manual it says you hold this up arrow down and then it resets it to 100%. There it is. So we are at 200 amp hours and 100%. Awesome. So let's hook something up to our inverter here. We're going to hook up this air conditioner and run a load. All right, let's turn the power on to the inverter. There we go. And it's showing that we are pulling seven watts, so that's gonna be the idle consumption of the inverter. Let's go ahead and turn on the air conditioner. Okay. And it's showing 17.4 watts. The compressor is not on yet on the air conditioner, so we're gonna have to wait a minute for that to kick on. All right, so at some point my camera stopped recording for whatever reason, and I just continued on talking, thinking that it was. But we've been running uh, this load. The compressor has been on, obviously. We're doing over 900 watts. And we've run down to 87%. So what I want to do right now is go ahead and turn off the air conditioner. And then... We'll turn off the inverter and let's charge it back up. So we'll hook up the positive here. And we need the negative to be on the inverter side of the shunt so we can actually count the power going in. There we go. That should work. All right, and let's plug in the charger. And we should see the power going in now, and we do. We see 42.7 amps going in. And I guess while it's charging, it looks like the screen like pulses. <laughs> so we'll just let it charge all the way back up to 100%. All right, so the charger has stopped. Our little green light is on, indicating that it's full. And our shunt here, our battery monitor here, is telling us we are at 100%, and we have 200 amp hours in the battery. All right, guys, so what I want to do now is I want to go ahead and turn the AC back on and just let it run all the way down. So let's just go ahead and start that up now. Turn on the AC, there we go. Okay, looks like we're pulling power now. There we go. Got over 300 watts coming out, that's still ramping up. All right, looks like close to 800 watts. So I'm just going to let that continue on and then I'll be back when it's either fully drained or really close. Alright, we are down to 2%. It says we got 5.3 amp hours left in there. So I'll just let it keep on going. Alright, so we're down to 1% now. 2.8 amp hours left. Our voltage is still at 12.2 volts. Pulling out to 80 amps. 
All right, so the shunt is saying 0%. Uh, however, it is saying we still have 1.6 amp hours left. We're at 12.1 volts. And still pulling over 80 amps. And we'll just let it keep on going. All right, here we come. There we go. We've pulled a full 200 amp hours out of these two 100 amp hour batteries. And it's still going. I think I'm gonna go ahead and turn it off because it's not actually gonna tell us any more information. It's only gonna tell us that we did in fact get 200 amp hours out of the batteries. So I'm gonna go ahead and shut the test down. All right, so I got all the screws loosened up. Let's take a peek on the inside. All righty, so here we are. Looks like we've got, what size is that? Looks like a four gauge. Well, there's not, it's not long enough to actually have the printing of the size on it. It looks like a four gauge. It has a 200 Celsius jacket on it. And then on the negative side, we've got three. It looks like, looks like 10 gauge. Again, I can't find a marker that tells me the size. Uh, but it's also a silicone jacketed wire. So it looks good. Solid. Here's our BMS, and uh, it has this metal bar <laughs> that goes over protecting it. That's pretty cool. And the the whole looks like the there's kind of a metal bracket around the all the cells as well. And we do have we do have prismatic cells. I can see them down in there. So I wonder if I can get these out. Oh, I think I can. Ah, I did get a little bit of movement. Oh, there we go. <laughs> nice. Well, they are in there. <laughs> All right. So let's see what we got. All right. So there's the top of the cells. We have aluminum laser welded bus bars we have uh, they do have a relief hump in them there is in fact uh, insulation material between the cells it's hard to see but there's the edge of it right there I don't know if you can see that very well there is definitely something between there uh, so they are isolated from one another, which is good. The cells are held together with this banding, and there's these metal plates on the sides. And between the metal plates and the cells, obviously there's this uh, fiber board. That's good. I do see... I think I see a temperature sensor yeah there it is there's a temperature sensor there's a temperature sensor right here so maybe these have low temp protection let's see if we can test that okay so we're putting in 38 amps that's upside down sorry about that <laughs> best I can do let's go ahead and try to freeze up this temperature sensor Yep, and we have low temperature protection. <laughs> Very nice. <laughs> so we got a mini battery that has prismatic cells and a low temperature protection. I wonder if I can get a scan on these QR codes. Ah, I did. And these are EVE cells. That's awesome. EVE 
LF100Ls. They're 100 amp hour, 320 watt hour cells. So we got EVE cells in these batteries. So that's really awesome. We're seeing really high quality cells come in these things now. All right, guys, so I think I'm going to wrap this one up. Let me know what you think about these batteries down in the comments. As always, I'll leave links in the description, and I'll catch you on the next one.